Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the five most common things I see as an ophthalmologist. Hey everyone, today let's talk about the five most common things you need to know about your eyes. There's five conditions that we should touch on. Dry eyes, cataracts, glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy. The eye is rather complex, so let's try to simplify things. Let's try to talk about a camera as an analogy to kind of capture the key structures about the human eye. The first part we need to talk about is the cornea, and that's similar to the front glass lens in a camera. The inner glass lens of the camera is most similar to the lens of the human eye, which eventually becomes a cataract. Then you have the Kodak sensor or the camera sensor, and that's most similar to the retina. And you also have the USB cable, which is most similar to the human optic nerve. Let's now focus on the front glass lens. Dry eyes is a condition that affects millions of Americans every single day. And the symptoms of dry eyes include eye pain, blurred vision, or dirt in your eyes, which is sometimes called a foreign body sensation. The treatment for dry eyes involves artificial tears, prescription medications such as Restasis, Sequel, or Zydra, or even punctal plugs where we stop tears from leaving your eyes. By far, my favorite treatment is artificial tears. I typically prefer preservative-free artificial tears, which come in these individual vials shown below. All right, that's a quick course on dry eyes. Let's move on to another part of the eye. Let's focus on the inner glass area which eventually becomes a cataract, as seen by my slit lamp photo on the right side of this slideshow. So what are cataracts? Cataracts are the natural aging of the crystalline lens inside your eye. Like a tree which grows rings every single year, your crystalline lens grows layers of cells every single year. Eventually, these layers of cells become so dense that it becomes yellow and it becomes a cataract. This eventually can cause symptoms, especially most profound with night driving. Patients often endorse significant glare and halos around lights, and some patients do notice a change in color, similar to wearing yellow sunglasses all the time. So, do you need cataract surgery? Well, to answer that, you need to ask yourself, does it affect your driving, your work, your hobbies? As a fun trivia question, who's in the photograph below? Well, the answer to the right is that's myself many years ago, but the gentleman in pink is actually none other than Hale Irwin, who was a three-time U.S. Open champion, and in the 2007 Walmart First Tee Open, he was the runner-up, and that's actually the tournament that I played with Hale Irwin many years ago. Okay, cataract surgery can be performed in three main steps. Um, first, we make an incision into the eye to obtain access to the lens, then we remove the cataract, and finally we insert a lens implant into the eye. Cataract surgery, of course, can be performed assisted with the femto laser, and it creates a perfectly round precision opening into the eye and softens the cataract for us. There's two types of lens implants available. A monofocal lens has one focus point, usually set for far away. So if you get a monofocal lens, far away will be much more clear than up close. So with this lens, you definitely will need reading glasses for up close. In contrast, a multifocal lens has multiple focal points. So that means you can see far away, intermediate, and up close. And that's a crash course about cataracts. Next, let's talk about now the optic nerve. The optic nerve is affected in a condition called glaucoma. In glaucoma, there are several risk factors. First, of course, is a family history. If your mom, dad, and grandparents have it, odds are you may get glaucoma as well. Glaucoma can be assessed by getting several different diagnostic tests, including an OCT nerve shown here, and also a visual field because glaucoma affects your peripheral vision and causes blind spots to enlarge. Your central vision typically remains clear. Also, of course, physical exam is fundamental at assessing glaucoma. Glaucoma treatment can be done with three different ways. Medications such as glaucoma drops, lasers, or even glaucoma surgery. All right, that's a crash course on glaucoma. Now, let's talk about the retina or the Kodak sensor of the eye. There are two conditions that typically affect the retina. 
The first is age-related macular degeneration, and the second is diabetic retinopathy. Here is a fundus photograph of a patient. Notice the scouted yellow spots in the retina. This is called drusen and is present in age-related macular degeneration. There's two main types, of course. There's the dry type, and then there's the wet type. In dry AMD, you have no fluid forming. The treatment is rather straightforward. First, I recommend no smoking for my patients, and second, I recommend taking the AREDS multivitamins or eating a diet full of leafy green vegetables. If you have wet age-related macular degeneration, you do have leaking blood vessels in the eye, and so we need to do injections to control that. All right, that's a crash course of age-related macular degeneration. Now, let's focus on diabetic retinopathy. In diabetic retinopathy, there's, there's one fundamental core principle, and that's poor blood sugar leads to damage of your blood vessels, and these blood vessels can bleed. Thus, we see these blood spots in non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. At this stage, the treatment is, of course, diet and exercise and good sugar control by taking your diabetes medications. However, if you continue to have poor blood sugar control, things worsen and things progress to the point where you actually have proliferative diabetic retinopathy and significant macular edema. The treatment of proliferative diabetic retinopathy is with lasers done via pan-retinal photocoagulation where we actually create burn spots inside your retina to deal with the ischemic retina. For those with macular edema, we actually do injections of medications directly into the eye. All right, that's a quick overview of diabetic retinopathy. So that was an overview of the five most common things I see in my eye clinic. I hope that was helpful. Don't forget as always, your eyes tell. We'll see you next time.